Mascots help identify companies. They're supposed to bring luck and can be used as fictional spokespeople. For example, Microsoft has Master Chief, Nintendo has Mario, and Sony has... um... Sackboy. This was the idea even back in the 80s. Nintendo still had Mario, NEC had Bonk, and Sega had... Alex Kidd? Or maybe... Opa Opa? That is, until 1991, when Sega released one of the most influential games of the 90s, Sonic the Hedgehog. Before Sonic, Nintendo pretty much ruled the entire video game market. But after Sonic the Hedgehog came out, suddenly the Genesis was the system to own. I mean, I even had friends that were afraid to admit they owned a Super Nintendo over a Sega Genesis. Sonic was the new speedy guy with a lot of attitude. Mario was old news for little kids. This was exactly what Sega was going for when they created Sonic. A new mascot to represent Sega that would challenge the Mario juggernaut. In this multi-part episode of The Gaming Historian, we're going to take a look at the complete history of one of the most iconic figures in the video game industry, Sonic the Hedgehog. The year is 1989, and Sega has released the Genesis, or the Mega Drive, in the United States. The console was released a year earlier in Japan, but lagged behind the Nintendo and even the Turbo Graphics. Sega clearly had the more powerful machine, but was running out of ideas to market it, besides some advertising such as the Genesis does what Nintendo don't ads. Company president Hayao Nakayama wanted Sega to have an identity with a mascot. Disney had Mickey Mouse and Nintendo had Mario, so why not give Sega a character? Nakayama held a company-wide search for a new mascot. Over 200 ideas were submitted, including a kangaroo, an armadillo, and a bear. Some of these original ideas would later become characters. For example, one idea was turned into the Sonic character, Mighty the Armadillo. Another sketch of a Theodore Roosevelt character turned into Dr. Robotnik. Even a concept of a rabbit who grabbed things with his ears evolved into the game Rystar. But, Naoto Ashima, a graphic designer for Sega, submitted this drawing from a napkin named Mr. Needlemouse. Oshima created this hedgehog character because he wanted to make a game that was fast, and hedgehogs were known to be fast creatures. Did you know hedgehogs can run up to six miles per hour? Not bad. He pitched the idea to the company, who teamed him up with a programmer named Yuji Naka. This was a match made in heaven, as Yuji Naka had an obsession with speed, Mr. Needlemouse was renamed Sonic, after the term Super Sonic, which means anything over the speed of sound. And with other employees, they formed Sonic Team. So, how did Oshima go from Mr. Needlemouse to the Sonic we know of today? Well, the first change was pretty simple, because all he did was change Sonic's color to blue to match the Sega logo. Another change was also pretty interesting. Now at the time, Michael Jackson was huge, extremely popular. Oshima loved Michael Jackson's boots, 
with the belts on them. Oshima took this idea and inspired by Santa Claus, changed the colors to red. But that's not all. Apparently Sonic's quick attitude is inspired by Bill Clinton's get it done attitude in politics. With Yuji Naka programming and Hirokazu Yasuhara designing the levels with steep cliffs, hills, jumps, and loops, Sonic the Hedgehog was almost ready to be released. Naka wanted to make it similar to Mario, since it was so popular. Mario collected coins, so Sonic collected gold rings. Mario used two buttons, Sonic used one button. Mario was a friendly, slow-paced side-scroller. Sonic was an extremely fast game with attitude. And fast it was. The game even put some racing titles to shame. If you didn't control Sonic, he would tap his foot impatiently. However, Sega was worried about how Americans would view Sonic. For one, he had a very Japanese anime look, which never seemed to be popular in the United States. Second, he was a hedgehog. Most Americans didn't even know what a hedgehog was, mainly because they aren't native to the United States. Sonic Team went back to appeal to American audiences with some changes, such as putting Sonic in a rock band, giving him fangs, and giving him a human girlfriend named Madonna. And no, I'm not kidding. With the new changes, Sonic the Hedgehog was pitched to Sega of America. Madeline Schroeder, sometimes known as the mother of Sonic, was in charge of going over the idea. Schroeder decided to soften Sonic up by removing his fangs, removing the rock band, and removing Madonna. She also had Sega of America redraw the character for a more American look. When the changes were shipped back to Japan, Sonic Team was a little miffed. Nevertheless, if this was what had to be done to sell the game, they accepted it. After some final touches, such as adjusting the speed of the game and adding a soundtrack done by Masato Nakamura of the band Dreams Come True, Sonic the Hedgehog was released on June 23rd, 1991 in North America and Europe. The game was a huge success, but only put a dent in the video game market. Sega needed to find a way to take down the dominance of Nintendo. Enter Tom Kalinske, the president of Sega of America. Kalinske had previously worked for Mattel, where he helped make the Barbie toy line extremely profitable. After serving as president of Mattel for three years, he joined Sega of America. Kalinske had four main ideas. 1. Drop the price of the Genesis from $199 to $149. 2. Set up game development in America to make games for American audiences. 3. Develop a new advertising campaign to attack Nintendo. And 4. Bundle the Sega Genesis with Sonic the Hedgehog instead of Altered Beast. Kalinske believed in the Razor and Blades business model. Now this is also known as freebie marketing. Now the idea behind freebie marketing is basically you take a product, you sell it for a very low price or just even give it away, and in turn another product will increase revenue. In Kalinske's case, he wanted to sell the Sega Genesis for an extremely low price with a free game. And this would cause more Sega Genesis to be in American households, and thus, software sales would increase. Kalinske pitched his idea to Nakayama and the board members of Sega. They thought Kalinske was insane. He wanted to lower the price of the console to reduce profit and bundle it with Sega's number one selling game. Nevertheless, Nakayama felt that if Kalinske thought it was a good idea, then it would work. The new plan was approved in time for the holiday season, and by 1992, Sega had a slight edge over Nintendo, and Sonic the Hedgehog had become a hit. But this was only the beginning for Sega's new icon. <laughs>